approximately 9.30, we received a phone call from an unknown male stating the device had been located at Denver High School and King Street Primary School. Denver Police Fire, uh, State Police Fire Squad were called and they responded to the school. As a precautionary me uh, measure, both schools were uh, evacuated. Uh, approximately 10, 10 a.m., we received a call of a bank robbery at 67 Town Road, which is the Bank of America. Uh, at that time, at this time, we're looking into possible connections, the call, and the bank robbery. Can you tell us anything about the, the suspect, what we know about the, the bank robbery suspect? The suspect is described as a white male wearing a straw hat, uh, a camouflage jacket, carrying a black duffel bag, and fled the scene on a bicycle. Approximate age? I have, don't have that information. We're going to hold up the questions. Gotcha. So, 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 State Police Bomb Squad, Denver Police Officers, Fire Department, <coughs> at the high school and King Street School, they're doing a secondary search for devices. And uh, that's what we see in the schools are evacuated. To my knowledge, there's no one Chief Carroll? Hello. Um, on the initial calls, we have uh, standard pr protocols that we dispatch units. Units responded to both scenes and uh, set up an incident command structure at the scene. Uh, once we found out that we had multiple incidents going on with a similar cause, uh, the EOC and the operations plan went into effect with the unified command structure. The unified command brings in all the relevant agencies, police, fire, EMS, city health, state DEP was notified, and they have been on the scene as well during this investigation. That is currently is still still the status. The EOC is operational. Uh, everything is coming through there, all communications, any information that comes in is gathered there. Uh, the information is that right now the scenes are both still active. We're awaiting the arrival of the uh, final response from the uh, uh, FBI at this time. Uh, the systems are uh, right now in uh, uh, lockdown as far as the, the schools have been notified already. So at this point, we're stasis. This is primarily a police agency report, so they are in the Unified Command, they are the lead agency, and the fire department at this point is taking a secondary role. Let me just you know, clarify that for a second. There was a device that was found at King Street Intermediate School. Uh, the nature of the device is currently uh, being investigated. Uh, it's not believed that it is uh, explosive in nature, although it is designed as, as a mock-up to appear so. So once we were alerted to that fact, uh, I made this decision in consultation with the superintendent of schools and Dr. Glass to close all schools for the rest of the day, so I just want to make sure that's why we take that step. Uh, Dr. Glass will give us a minute briefing a little bit on what the plan is for tomorrow for the rest of the day. Good afternoon. As Mayor Bowman said, we can take our marching orders from the back of hand. Um, the plan right now is to open all schools regular time tomorrow with one exception. That is Denver High School. We're not concerned about the situation. Things appear to be progressing very nicely. However, third period today is when we received notice that we had to evacuate the school. Consequently, students without a personal belongings, their purses, keys, things like that. I want to make sure that nothing's taken. Um, therefore, we're bringing all staff in tomorrow morning at the regular time. The students will be in approximately 10 o'clock. We're sending our notice to the parents and guardians right now. To that effect. So students will come at 10 o'clock and report to the third period class, the class that they've been or received the most to evacuate, therefore they can take the first one fast. Just want to publicly recognize the great work of the city of Hidden State. Thank you to the mayor and the rest of the team. Uh, it was a way that you could take a bad situation and uh, make it at least bearable. They did a great job with the thank you. We also want to thank the Red Cross for providing all the assistance that they provide. And Steve Woods is here and Senator Dell for any uh, questions that you might have. With that, uh, I don't want to take any questions that you might have. Julie? I have two questions. Um, the only unit that was evacuated then was by the district That's correct. Once uh, there was a device located on scene uh, by the state police bomb squad, we then took the next steps would be to evacuate the surrounding neighborhoods uh, until we understand sort of the nature uh, of the device. Aside, aside from the timing, is there anything uh, that, that's uh, a 
specific reason why the police believe that the bank robbery and the schools are connected to Aside from the past history we've had with those kinds of incidents, the old timers that have been around here a while, um, they really, at this point, we really can't demonstrate an nexus between the call and the threats and the, and the uh, bank robbery. But the investigation's ongoing, it's continuing. We've got our best people on it, and we feel confident that we'll be able to eventually make an arrest. Did the device that was found at the school look like one that was described in the call by the provider? The, the, the information that was provided to us in the call was very specific. And it's found in the location where it said it would be found. Where, where, where was that found there? Where was that device found in the school? I'm not going to be able to release any more information. We have an ongoing investigation where it's really privacy at this point. The caller that called in this morning, what did that caller say in that bomb threat that came against the two schools? Again, I can't really give any specifics of the call just to say that we gave a specific, credible um, uh, threats uh, to both facilities as well as. Tell us about the bank robbery. If we can elaborate on, on that, um, is it still an active scene? Do we know any details about any money that was taken or any, any threats that were made against any employees? Well, as uh, Captain Miles mentioned in his opening, uh, the uh, a person uh, did leave on a bicycle uh, wearing a straw hat and camouflage jacket. That is an ongoing investigation, and uh, we feel confident and we've had uh, a lot of good luck over the last several years of apprehending those individuals and have kind of captured several of them uh, engaged in activity that we have about to be able to add to that. Specific, but also there was some ambiguity in the terminology used by the individual calling the threat. The threat was going to the police department. So at that point, based on that information, uh, we asked our, our custodians of both public and private schools to go through those locations that are indicated in the call, double check all of the sites uh, to see if there's anything that might look different than what normally looks. At this point, we really don't have any other information on that. That so that kind of research or investigation is ongoing. Uh, but uh, we do have the Connecticut State Police Bomb Squad. As Bomb Squad not seen, we'll be able to uh, react in fact somebody has said something that's uh, a little bit off. Was it like a 911 call that came in, or just a regular? It was a private phone call. Uh, we're in, trying to investigate the story right now. I don't believe it was a 911 call. It was not a 911 call. A guy who seems like somewhat of a character, you know, describing it. Uh, was he known to you, or is he someone that's known throughout town? Or? The person throughout the bank? Yeah. If we knew him, we'd have arrested. So <laughs> <laughs> at this point, no. Um, and again, we don't really have a, have a real um, belief, and we're not really sure if there's a connection between the bank robbery and uh, the bond funds, but uh, we certainly are going to investigate that possibility. Are you reviewing any surveillance tape from the bank at Absolutely. this point? Is that something we can have access? It will actually, once it's been processed, typically by our crime scene uh, technicians or evidence technicians, something like that typically will release to the press and then we can see it uh, on YouTube and everywhere else. So, mm -hmm. in that as well. Is that still a crime scene over at the B of A right now? Is it still active crime scene investigators? Okay. Detectives are still not seen, as far as I know. What about the mock-up device? Was it what, was it pretty legit looking? I mean, did it, was it a shoebox? Was it, was it? No, it, uh, it was exactly as described in the call, and uh, certainly did the uh, uh, crime scene. Uh, investigators lost the call. People didn't find their houses around there? At this time, people are moving back from their houses too. About how many people were, were evacuated from the homes? Chief Grant? Uh, I don't have that because we're certainly doing the self evacuation for the CTY. We use the emergency uh, management uh, system. I'm going to guess in the 50 or 60 homes. Uh, there were neighbors directly surrounding uh, King Street uh, School Complex, the primary right entity. How unusual is this to have to dismiss all of your schools district-wide? I would call it an extraordinary step, but again, based on the nature of the threat and the fact that there was a device found exactly as described in the call, it gave us pause for thought. At that point, we thought it would be prudent to 
the Smith Hall schools and also work with our parochial and private school with counterparts in the Smith State schools as well. And let the janitors and custodians just do a walk. We don't have threats against any of those schools, but we want to make sure that we're taking every step we can to preserve uh, safety for staff and for students. Now, Superintendent, if you answer this question, if you can come to the mic, that'd be great. But, um, I understand that there were some parents who said that they didn't receive the emergency message to come pick up their children. What was the problem there? We used something called the Honeywell Instant Alert System, and it didn't, in fact, work well. The issue apparently is that we send the alert to the primary phone number. Uh, some parents, I think, were unaware that they wanted to have a cell phone or a different kind of communication, uh, general email. They didn't want the site themselves to register. We sent out a second alert just to make sure that we had coverage and then the schools were sending out individual alerts as a decision what was made to close all schools. What would you say that process was like when I mean, you have all of these kids who are let out or the parents are at home or at work and I mean was this a fluid process or was there some, you know, I mean with the kids there and out of school, what would, how would you describe it? It was textbook. We had emergency management plans. In all schools, we have one for the district, and our folks handle it very, very well. Um, especially the biggest concern with the older children. And we had staff in tables as parents came to pick up the youngsters. They had to sign in and sign the names of the children out. And we had staff walking into the parents, and they would dismiss that. We had some very young children in something called the Little Hatters Preschool Program. We were allowing parents to come through the lines after they showed proper identification. And those are to take them as well. And the high school kids just did a great job. We also had to bless them with nice weather, which makes it much easier. Bringing the kids over to the Zion Hopkins Street, that wasn't a problem having them in that facility? No, actually, it's an adventure for them. And it's just a block down the road. And there's a lot of shade trees in the back. The kids were all kind of camped out in the back. And the staff, again, was very, very responsive. Were those the kids at King Street Elementary School were taken over to the firehouse while they waited for parents? It's a campus. We have King Street Primary, K2, King Street Intermediate grades 3 through 5. All kindergarten through fifth grade youngsters were brought over to the firehouse. Um, today's senior skip day here. Is it, do you think? We don't recognize that day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I mean, is that being taken into account in terms of investigating this, this bomb threat as being a prank? We're going to look at all angles, but I'm going to tell you something. My initial thought, from, again, I'm not an investigator, would be that it really would be a reflection of some skip day. We actually found a device that was in the spot where this person sat on the end. Uh, we think that um, it probably was to be related to some skip day. But we're going to look at that. We're going to look at every angle. We've got the best uh, detective here, the best police force in the state. We're going to track down the people and, and we're going to get them arrested. Did you say it probably was or was not related? No, we. we we really don't think that somebody would go to that length that extent to get people out from seeing a skip day. So, um, and we don't recognize that data either. Just to be clear. And it sounds like you're both older. I really, I can't comment on, on the age or whatever the sex is. Well, you said it was a man. I think there was a man. Yeah. 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 Ye
Uh, it's on South King Street Road. Really. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Street number, actually. Okay. And what kind of school is this miss for everyone? What time of school that? Uh, that was on a rolling uh, basis, right, Bill? I mean, there's some there's some programs that let out as late as one or one fifteen, one thirty. Um, there are other uh, ones that were dismissed about twelve thirty, one twelve. So between twelve and one thirty. And that's because we have more buses around. We have an emergency closure system. And what's the address of that bank over here? 67? Reverse 911 system was used citywide to alert on um, <coughs> what was it used for? I mean, what areas were they used for? The areas that we were requesting people to evacuate from. Is this the first time we've had to use that system? No, we use it pretty extensively. We, we had two components to it. One is the, the emergency side, which uh, really calls everybody from the city and all numbers. That's used very rarely. The other side is the community outreach side that's used for general announcements. So, um, from the, the, the emergency uh, 911 system, the reverse system, we've used that several times throughout the year. But it's pretty rare. Missing child, things like that. How many people have to come into the 311 center? Uh, our 311 center is pretty busy. Um, you know, we're fully staffed uh, down there and they're taking uh, several calls a uh, minute. Uh, so the Dan Danbury High School is closed. Is the only one that's closed tomorrow? Did I hear it correctly? Opening late. Opening late. As of right now, but it's subject to change if there's anything else that. And the other schools will be open tomorrow. Other schools okay. All right. There are a lot of calls to the 311 system about the uh, about the threat. For people looking for more information about. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And will it be will it be used on three four nine one one? Be used to alert people about the school school tomorrow. Well, they'll use the school system to do that to call parents and let them know what the schedule Can I get the names again? I'm sorry, I'm officer. Miles, I'm wide of this. There's a question, otherwise, Miles. Thank you. Thank you. Determine that everybody's living in the research and to get this phone call. And then that right. each message that goes out is tailored specifically for the use. In other words, that particular message. It's called, it's connect, it's connect CTY is what it's called. It's, 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 there's a number of vendors that use that one. And, and yeah, reverse 911 is kind of like an omnibus name. Any of, the, any of these systems can fit into supplemental devices. To tell you the truth, it's been around for a long time. I don't remember how soon. It may have actually come before that. And the school has a separate system where they can contact their own parents and teachers. And so you just implemented your um, normal it's, it's part. It's part of our emergency operations plan is to notify that. For example, for example, if there were a bad snowstorm coming, everybody in the city of Danbury might be told that, listen, it's going to be a snowstorm, uh, don't park on the streets. Um, but we can do it like by street, we can do it by region, or however. It's a very effective system. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Oh, both systems are used? The we use the system, the Connect CTY was a system used from the EOC to tell the people to evacuate. Right. The other system for the school board was used just to call the parents and notify them. To two totally different systems. Okay. And um, the, the one that the people have complaints about, which um, some people didn't have their cell phone number uh, into the that system. Was the school system. That was the school and system. I know nothing about that system. Now, who's in charge of that system? That would be the school board. School board? Yep. Okay, great. Yep.